Ah, so. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 just released, and it's fantastic. Genuinely an incredible experience, the perfect conclusion to the Guardians trilogy, and honestly, it's probably my favorite MCU movie ever made. And now, James Gunn moves on from Marvel to head a new direction of the DC Universe, starting with writing and directing Superman Legacy. And he said that some of his Guardians cast will make an appearance at DC. And that really excites me, because that means that my pick for this new Superman is still a possibility. He was really great in Guardians 3, he can perfectly embody what makes the Man of Steel special, and I think it's time the actor got more of a spotlight. Trust me, we gotta let James Gunn cook on this one. This video is brought to you by FlexiSpot. To make these videos, I spend a lot of my time researching, writing, editing, making thumbnails, and so because of that, I end up at my desk for the majority of the day. But studies have shown that sitting for long periods can lead to back pain, obesity, and even heart problems. And so I was so excited when FlexiSpot sent me their E4 dual motor electric standing desk. And I'm gonna be 100% honest with you all, I love this thing. I'm used to working at a smaller space, so my setup has had to be pretty minimal. It's honestly just my laptop that I've got propped up on a stand, but this desk is absolutely massive. I got the 60 by 30 inch desktop, but it comes in a variety of sizes, and the sheer amount of space that I've had to work on has been really great. My old desk was so small and wobbly that I wasn't able to really do any writing or typing on it, but the flex spot is so sturdy and stable that I'm able to work at it for hours. It was super easy to put together, the motors are super smooth and quiet, and the display tells you exactly how high up the desk is, and there are three preset buttons that make it easier for me to go from sitting to standing. And there's even this little timer that I can set to remind me to stand up every once in a while when I'm at the desk. So if you're in the market for a standing desk, check out my link in the description and get this one for yourself. Again, this is the E4 model, but they offer a ton of different options that are all great. And thanks again to FlexiSpot for sending me the desk and sponsoring this video. I've always enjoyed the Guardians movies. I've always thought that they were great and I've always recognized the things that made them great, but I was never like in love with them as much as a lot of other people were. I honestly had more of a connection to Guns of the Suicide Squad more than anything else. And so believe me when I say that Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is genuinely incredible. It's my favorite of the Guardians trilogy, far and away my favorite MCU movie to date, and it's up there in terms of my favorite comic book movies of the past decade. I'm not joking when I say that a CGI raccoon made me cry like I was a goddamn baby. That's how good the movie is. Any issues that I've had with the quote unquote MCU style are completely gone. It feels so personal and handmade. Every single shot in the movie is gorgeous and filled to the brim with directorial intent. It's just overflowing with creativity and artistic freedom, full of fantastic prosthetics and practical effects whenever it can. And it's definitely been a treat to see James Gunn's directorial style shift with the past few years, from the Guardians movies, to the Suicide Squad, to Peacemaker, and now this. The jump might seem a little bit inconsistent between volumes two and three, but I really like that it kind of mirrored Gamora's story, honestly, in the movie. And I've loved seeing him grow as a creator, and it makes me all the more excited for his Superman. And the other thing that excites me about Gunn directing Superman is who he's going to bring in from other projects. James Gunn is known for casting his friends in his movies, either as cameos or with parts written specifically for them. There are some people that have given him shit for this, but it's something that I've always respected about him. A film set is a place to form relationships and friendships, and Gunn finds people that he connects with and knows he works well with so that they can make the best possible product together. It's really no different than Christopher Nolan using Cillian Murphy in half of his movies, or Scorsese and De Niro, or Tarantino and Sam Jackson. The relationship between a director and an actor is really special, and I like that Gunn emphasizes that and doesn't just relegate them to someone who reads the lines. Now, I don't really see too many of the main cast of Guardians coming over and becoming main characters at DC. At most, we might see people like Chris Pratt in a villain or cameo role, but nothing super major. But there are people that Gunn puts in nearly all of his movies, like Michael Rooker, Nathan Fillion, his brother Sean, and his wife Jennifer. For Holland. Most of them were already part of the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker. Actually, they all were. But who knows after this reboot how much of that's going to stick. So I think it's super likely that we'll see them play at least some part in his Superman. I think Michael Rooker will be a really good Bibbo or maybe even Perry White. And it's now more possible than ever to see Nathan Fillion make the jump from voice actor to live action for Hal Jordan, depending on the direction they want to go with that character. Pom Clementieff, the actress that plays Mantis, is also super close with James and is basically a shimwin for at least some part in Superman or DC. She can make a fun Mercy Graves, or I see some people mentioning her for Lois, and I really like that idea. But the Guardian that I most want to see make the jump to the DC universe is Dave Batista. No joke, Batista is one of my favorite actors working today. He was incredible in Knock at the Cabin, Glass Onion, Dune, Blade Runner 2049. He always disappears into every single role that he's cast in and genuinely enjoys the art of acting, not just being a movie star or being famous. And I want to give him the chance to shine in a big role completely different from Drax. I see a lot of people fan casting him as Bane, which I'm not really the biggest fan of, since if you ask me, Bane very much needs to be played by a Latino actor. But I think Batista would be an incredible Lex Luthor. Not only would this be a huge change of pace for a lot of general audiences compared to its performance as Drax, but it would also be a stark contrast to the other depictions of Lex we've seen in the past. That kind of rhymed. Look at that. Look at me. Oh God, I'm not doing another poem, am I? And to add to it, there is the physicality of it all. We've never seen a live action Lex Luthor be physically imposing before like he was in All-Star Superman. And depending on who they cast for Superman, there could be a really cool visual contrast between Clark and Lex. I would honestly really like to see a smaller, slimmer Superman and have him face off against a six foot four, 300 pound Lex Luthor made of pure muscle would be a really great visual. Not only would it be a nice representation of the over powering force of fascism, but I think it'd be so interesting to see a version of Lex that's so focused on strength and masculinity, only to be overpowered 
powered by a guy half his size and how that could fuel his hatred for Superman even further. Let me know down below if you want to see me do a full pre-write video for Superman Legacy, by the way. I, I promise I still do those videos. I really want to. I'm just very tired. I've seen some pushback to the idea of Gunn directing a Superman movie, but personally, I've always been on board. I mean, if this movie is going to be so important to the future of DC, then I would hate to see James pass off his script to another director, especially since at first he didn't even want to make a Superman movie until he had a truly special direction he was going to take it. Some people say that Gunn's style doesn't fit Superman, but I don't really agree with that. Sure, his style of humor is pretty distinct and pretty well known, but there's more to a director's style than just making jokes. I mean, even just on a surface level, like all the flight scenes and action scenes with Adam Warlock in Guardians 3, like that was perfect. Perfect, if you ask me. But also Gunn has famously injected so much heart and love and empathy into his comic book adaptations, whether that's its Guardians movies or the Suicide Squad or Peacemaker. Despite being so focused on humor, they all still put such an emphasis on real, genuine human emotions, usually ones of hope and positivity out of darkness. The character of Superman may seem like a bigger jump from Guardians compared to something like the Suicide Squad, but that empathy and that heart is still the same. This is a story about compassion. It's about the power of compassion, the power of empathy, and hopefully a little bit of that will soak up. And the thing that really sold me on this was Rocket's story in Guardians 3. The movie put such a big emphasis on Rocket Raccoon, and in my opinion, quickly turned him into the best character of the entire MCU. His story is filled with so much pain and anguish, the subject matter is so dark and disturbing. Chikwadi Awuji as the High Evolutionary is absolutely incredible. He's one of the most despicably evil and hateable villains I've ever seen in a superhero movie. And his story and what he represents is fundamentally a personification of a lot of really dark, real feelings. There's a moment in this movie where a character lets out a scream, just a long, excruciating scream of anger and sadness and pain. It's only for a few seconds, but it feels like it lasts an eternity. It's one of the most raw and vulnerable things that Marvel has ever done, to the point that it feels like nothing else out of the MCU. A lot of people have been put off by how serious this movie gets and the tonal shift from comedy into darkness. And I understand that at times it can almost be hard to watch, but I think that that's a necessary part to what makes the movie work so well. Rocket's life has been filled with so much pain and trauma. It's been implied and mentioned in the previous movies, but for the first time, we're able to live through that firsthand, and it completely reinforms everything that we know about his character. And as we learn all this about his past, we see that Rocket is at one of the most low, dark places someone can be. His pain and his trauma have led to him feeling completely worthless. And by showing us everything that he's been through in such explicit, uncomfortable detail, it makes us sympathize with him even more. And so when he overcomes that pain, overcomes the horrible things that were done to him, overcomes the feelings of sadness and grief and chooses to protect the lives of others, we as the audience know how far he's come. I'm gonna be uh, probably a little too honest with you all. Um, I haven't exactly been doing like the best mentally lately. Um, it, it's like a lot of different things and stuff and I won't get into like too de much details with that. I, I don't know, I just be kind of feeling a little like worthless lately. And so when I went into Guardians 3, I was just kind of expecting you know, a fun experience that could let me forget everything at home, everything that's been going on. And, you know, the same way that pretty much every other comic book movie has done for the past decade, you know, just fun escapism. Instead, I saw the story of someone who feels worthless, someone whose life has been nothing but pain and suffering, who still does the right thing and proves to himself and to everyone around him that his life is important. The core of the Guardians of the Galaxy as a concept is people rising above their pain, rising above their circumstances and helping those around them and proving that nobody is worthless. And it's this emotional core of Guardians 3, the single character arc, the single plot line, that one message, that all life has meaning, that proved to me that James Gunn is the perfect pick to make a Superman movie. I always hope for one thing when people go to see a movie. I hope that when they go to see a movie, when they walk out of the theater, they love the person next to them a little more than what they felt about them when they walked in. Maybe they feel a little bit more hopeful about what this world can be than when they walked in. But there's one more thing above all else that proves without a shadow of a doubt that James Gunn is the right man for the job. But I was hoping yeah, I could cast you as Crypto. So it sounds like there's gonna be a character called Crypto in Superman, breaking news. That's a scoop for me. Yeah, <laughs> it is a scoop, I guess. That's, That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's there, baby! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! But what did you think of Guardians 3? And do you think James Gunn is a good pick for a Superman movie? And let me know down below what Guardian actor you'd want to see make the switch to the DCU and what character they should play. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Special thanks to Anz, Already Done It, Codemaster, Cabbage Boy, Cassidy Bond, Chicken McDoofus, Cosmic Tragedy, Dan the Dreamer Shill, DJ Ricky 08, Eden Kenna, Iron Ninja, Jake Selig, Jonah, Corey's Not Fresh, Lime Spice XL, Logan Triple Films, Spectacular Clyde, Tim Newfeld, Troy Says By Erasure is Lame, Tyler Goodrich, Josh Kapoor, Zachary Stonebreaker, and Zero to Hero 148 for being spectacular fanboys on my Patreon. This has been Troy Boy 17 coming at you live. Be responsible, and I'll see you around.